So we wanted to bring a little nature to you and um, offer this coffee break for you on a Thursday. So we'll be doing these every couple weeks and I'll, our next one will be on June 11th. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end, but thanks for joining us. Um, since this is our first one, if you have any feedback, please feel free to be in touch. So today we're going to take a stroll on the San Pedro River. And I just thought it would be fun to do something a little immersive in nature as best we can in this format. I've been out this spring doing some walking on the San Pedro River and um, it's a gorgeous spot and I just thought it would be wonderful to share it with all of you if you're not able to get out there. And I, I did introduce myself before, but I'll just introduce it again, myself again now. Um, I'm Louise Mistel. I, I'm executive director at Sky Island Alliance. I actually started as a volunteer at Sky Island Alliance many years ago, um, 14 years ago, just about, and um, was when I first started working here. And it's been a real pleasure uh, and learning experience these many years to protect and restore the diversity of life in the Sky Islands with this wonderful organization. So thank you for joining us. So the San Pedro River. Um, I hope many of you have gotten a chance to visit yourselves, but we'll take a dabble here today if you haven't. It's the last free flowing river in the Southwest. It's a really special place in the Sky Islands. Um, you can see here this wonderful gallery forest, Cottonwood Willow Gallery, um, with some mid-story deep willow and mesquite and lots of different plants. And this is habitat that's really important for a wide diversity of birds and mammals, reptiles, a, a really wide diversity of species. And it's a special spot in our surrounding arid desert and grassland habitats. Uh, many stretches of the San Pedro are perennial, which means that they flow year-round, so there's water always available. There are also uh, stretches for sure that are, are no longer perennial, and I'll talk a little bit about what's going on with uh, issues around the river and why those stretches are no longer uh, perennial in some places. Um, it's The river's fed by groundwater, uh, so it's really important that the Groundwater is close to the surface to keep this beautiful year-round flow uh, feeding all of these plants and animals. And in a lot of places, there's actually springs that have been mapped that are keeping the perennial flow going in the river. So it's this interesting phenomenon of springs in, um, in a river channel that keep perennial water flowing, which is pretty common here in the Sky Islands. So let's just do a little geography. Um, on the left is a, a zoom out view of the Sky Island region. And you can see, let me get a pointer here. So here is the San Pedro River. It's running right through the heart of the Sky Island region. It originates in Sonora near Cananea uh, and flows north across, across the US-Mexico border uh, all the way until it reaches the Gila uh, river at the north end. It flows for about 140 miles from its headwaters in Mexico to where it joins the Gila River and forms this amazing lush ribbon of life that we're going to be looking at more closely. On the right hand side here is a, a little bit of a zoom in so you can see the actual watershed. Uh, it's, it's divided into two areas, what's known as the upper watershed here originating near Cananea and then the lower watershed the lower San Pedro up in this um, stretch here. And you can see here too, uh, just to note that the Sky Island Mountains, the forested mountains that um, delineate the watershed are really vital for recharge of the river. They feed the watershed for the river and form this important place in the heart of the Sky Islands. So the, um, something else, just looking here, um, you can see it's this very linear north-south feature. This is one of four major north-south migratory bird corridors in, in the southwestern United States. The other ones are the Rio Grande, the Santa Cruz, and the Colorado River. So really important, there's only these few migratory um, flyways where hundreds of species 
um, stop over to get food and water on their way from places as far south as Central America, Mexico, um, traveling much further north in North America. So it's really this continental crossroads. And some folks estimate that about 45% of the 900 species of birds found in North America use the San Pedro at some point during their lifetime, or yeah, in their lives. So here's an aerial view, uh, get a bird's eye view here. So we're on the upper San Pedro River here. We're looking south into Mexico. On the right here is the Huachuca Mountains and the uh, Coronado National Forest, Coronado National Memorial. And you can see off in the distance here the border wall that's currently built that's stopping about here. So we're just going to take a little uh, overview, flight over here uh, via a video. So just a note, uh, you probably want your sound up. There's going to be lots of fun sounds to hear. And fingers crossed the video works. Technology is always fickle. So here we go. Right, so you can see there at the end of this video, this, this place where uh, border wall, impermeable border wall has not yet been constructed across the river. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. We're gonna start out um, up here on the uh, lower San Pedro River uh, in an area that's near and dear to my heart. Um, this is a view here on the lower San Pedro. So my uh, first job with my newly minted science degree out of college was monitoring endangered southwestern willow flycatchers on this stretch of river. Uh, I got to spend a summer here getting up uh, before dawn every day and um, watching these willow flycatchers build nests and raise babies. And it meant that I got to see an incredible diversity of other wildlife, uh, bobcats, badgers, um, all kinds of snakes and frogs, lots of different birds. So we'll just dive in here and have a look and listen and see what's going on. So we've got some birds singing in the background here. Um, the first bird you might have heard and noticed because it was very loud and clear is the yellow warbler. These are beautiful bright yellow birds that nest all along the San Pedro and in, um, in lots of different riparian habitats in the Sky Island region. And very common here and often um, the wonderful background noise as you walk along the San Pedro. And this bird, the black-headed grosbeak, was calling at the very beginning of that video. It was a little further away, so harder to hear, maybe. Um, we'll listen. So another 
another bird that commonly here on walks on the San Pedro. And you notice this, the grosbeak has a very large bill. These are seed eaters and the um, yellow warblers uh, that we saw before, they have a very delicate bill. They're often up really high in the canopy gleaning insects out of cottonwood gallery and willow gallery. So this is the southwestern willow flycatcher, the bird that I, I mentioned I was uh, working on out of college. And they live along the lower San Pedro. There's actually designated critical habitat for them here. They're endangered. Um, much of their habitat has been lost. They really, in, in the southwest, they really need these cottonwood willow riparian galleries with some flowing water associated with them. Um, we'll have a listen to this bird. Uh, this bird was not, I didn't hear it on when I was there this spring walking because they don't arrive until about mid-May um, and then they start nesting along the San Pedro. So now we'll turn our attention down to the river and some smaller creatures. Uh, I always love, as I walk along, there's so much different kinds of life um, with algae and little plants growing along the water. Uh, these are just some snails. important food source for bigger animals um, and just really cool. I think they're really cool. This is a damselfly that was uh, sitting on a rock near a faster flowing portion of the stream. These are real pretty. There's lots of different kinds of dragonflies and damselflies um, and, and high invertebrate diversity in the river as well. Now this creature, we'll see if you can spot it. Um, there's some commentary here. So my partner and I, when we take these kinds of walks, we like to take little videos for my four-year-old nephew who loves nature and loves to see all the critters in the desert and is constantly asking about cactus flowers. So you get the joy of narration for a four-year-old if you can hear the narration. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah. So this is most likely a lowland leopard frog. Um, lowland leopard frogs and Chiricahua leopard frogs look pretty similar, but we think, we think this one's a lowland leopard frog. Chiricahua leopard frogs are endangered um, and have pretty limited habitat areas. They, they need this kind of constantly flowing water. Uh, lowland leopard frogs are a little bit more widespread, really pretty uh, frogs that you can often see walking along the San Pedro, and you can also often hear them calling. This is a recording from uh, nighttime.
So we were thrilled to see these frogs and they tend to hang out in little pooled areas where the water uh, backs up and forms a little bit deeper water where there's some structure like the logs we saw in the, in the water there. We saw lots and lots of tadpoles. So that was great to see. So this, uh, we kept seeing this <laughs> as we walked along wider open stretches of the river where there was a lot of moist soil um, near the flowing water. And we were trying to figure out what is this? Somebody's digging. It certainly looks like somebody's digging. Um, and there were some funny little ruts and things. And we finally came upon who had been digging in the soil. Hunter, now we have a quaddy, actually a quadamundi, lone male. And they're so full of themselves, they're not even scared of us. Look at them, just over there digging. He's digging, he's looking for grubs and bugs, little snails and things. So we came across this lone male and we were thrilled. We, we hung back behind some branches and watched him turn over rocks and dig, dig, dig in the wet soil. And then just a little further up the river, we saw these guys, which was a whole troop, a uh, family troop of females and some younger wadi. <laughs> There's still some over in that green stuff. And here they are a little closer. So the females and the young travel together in these big family groups and you often often see kawadis in big groups like this. Um, just digging up grubs and other invertebrates in the wet soil. Uh, this was the one who was standing sentry there in the last video who I, I thought they had all scattered and as I walked by I looked over and, and saw this kawadi still looking at me. I just, I've seen lots of kawadis in my time out in the field in the Sky Islands and they just never cease to tickle and delight me. They're just very beautiful creatures. And there's a close up so you can see a face since we've been pretty far away. I'm definitely not an expert filmer, but it's fun to see the critters. So we can often tell um, what's, what's been someplace, even if we don't see it by the sign that's left behind. We saw the kawadis digging and this is some poop and a track um, from a turkey. And Sky Island Alliance as an organization for many years has, has worked with volunteers to teach them how to identify this kind of sign and then help monitor special places in the Sky Islands to understand what wildlife is moving there and keep track of what's, what's living there and moving there. So we saw, uh, or these, these turkeys are around in the San Pedro, and these are some photos from a remote camera that Sky Island Alliance uh, has on the San Pedro. Some of our cameras we maintain ourselves, uh, wildlife cameras, and some of them we have uh, wonderful partners, one of who's on the, on the video call who's maintaining a camera along the San Pedro of their own and share photos with us. And turkeys are great food for mountain lions. Um, so this is another remote camera photo of a mountain lion, as well as bobcats, which are found along the river. Um, lots of great food for these large cats here. And I don't have a photo of a jaguar because I don't, we don't have any photos of jaguars along the San Pedro itself, but this is certainly an important corridor for all kinds of wildlife in addition to birds. And, um, there is a documentation of a jaguar, I think it was um, killed along the Santa Cruz many years ago that had a belly full of leopard frogs. So um, lots of important food for all the different critters living here.
All right, this is a poop that one of us accidentally stepped on. And you can see that this critter has been eating lots of shiny, beautiful beetles and bugs. This is a skunk poop. And there's four species of skunk found on the San Pedro River, which is pretty amazing. That's the four, all four species found in um, North America. And um, really high mammal diversity on the river. And, oh, are you pausing me, Emily? No, okay. Um, so I'll just show you the different species here. This is a hog-nosed skunk. This is a striped skunk, a hooded skunk, and my favorite, the spotted skunk. So these guys eat all kinds of different bugs and insects and um, are, are one of my favorites on the remote cameras to see what they're up to. Okay, now we're gonna jump down to the upper San Pedro River, closer to the border um, in, in this area here. And I wanna show you, uh, this map is to show you where the San Pedro Riparian National Conservation Area is, which is right here uh, starting at the US-Mexico border. It's an area that was set aside to protect the riparian, um, the riparian features of the San Pedro River. Um, a really, this is a really important part of the river. It's managed by the Bureau of Land Management. It's an area where there's a lot of uh, different diversity here. And um, lots of archeological paleontology, paleon, paleontological um, resources as well. So it was really set aside because of this amazing riparian habitat. Um, one of the issues that's going on with, with the river right now is that the Bureau of Land Management has updated their, is working to update their resource management plan for this important area. And it was originally set aside for all of the diversity of life values. And they're um, proposing to let cattle grazing happen on a much more significant portion of the Sprinca, the San Pedro Riparian National Conservation Area. And so um, that's actually being litigated by Sierra Club, um, Center for Biological Diversity and other organizations to try to keep this one remaining stretch of protected river really protected for the water and wildlife that live here. Uh, one of the things that is affecting the San Pedro River is groundwater pumping. And um, this is a look at, um, at work that the Nature Conservancy has been doing in cooperation with volunteers and other partners since about 2007, where they uh, get folks out to walk the, ex the extent of the San Pedro River uh, as much as they can, where they have permission to be on the land, and map where there is perennial water, so water still flowing in June each year. And you can see on these maps the stretches where there's perennial water are blue, the river is wet, and where um, there is not water flowing. And it, it changes year to year. Um, some stretches are being really affected by climate change and changes in precipitation, and some stretches particularly um, in the southern part near the riparian conservation area are being affected by the nearby city of Sierra Vista and other development that uh, draws down groundwater. And like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, the, the river, the flow, the surface flow of the river depends on groundwater to persist. So there's a real threat here in terms of keeping this river living um, and a lot of work that needs to be done to recognize the connection between the surface flow in the San Pedro and the groundwater pumping that's happening around it to protect it. So the San Pedro is, this is a photo of it flowing north out of Sonora. Um, and like I said, it's about 150 miles all the way to the Gila. Nice aerial shot here in Sonora. And Sky Island Alliance has been doing uh, work with partners in Northern Sonora in the headwaters of the San Pedro River on Rancho Los Fresnos, which it used to be a TNC property and is now managed in cooperation with uh, TNC and Naturalia, uh, 
an organization in Sonora, Mexico, a conservation organization. So this is another way to support the river is to ensure that the upland habitat that uh, re charges the river is absorbing water and in good healthy shape to help that water infiltrate down into the river. This is a look at the border where the San Pedro is flowing into the United States from Mexico. And you can see there's, there's not a lot of infrastructure here. They've got some vehicle barriers here right now and a road that's moving through um, east to west to allow them to um, patrol this area. So this, this area that's open right now um, is um, slated, at the, the laws have been waived in this area, environmental laws and other laws to expedite border wall construction. Um, and last October, many of you will remember that it seemed uh, really eminent that they were gonna start construction here and then we're not really sure what's happened. Um, they uh, did some cutting down of trees, they cleared some land here, um, but we were just down there in April and nothing seems to have moved forward. The rumor is that once they made these initial um, efforts that they couldn't figure out how to build the wall across this river. And the river looks really tame right now, but in uh, monsoon season, it can flow pretty incredibly. Um, there's another look into Mexico uh, where the river is crossing the border. And here's a look at some flood debris just on our walk on the way, um, walking downstream from the border. Uh, you can see that flows get pretty big in this river. So uh, both in monsoon and in winter when there's winter storms. So real, real um, issues here with trying to build infrastructure across the river. And obviously it's just not needed and uh, would be terribly destructive to the movement of wildlife and alter the hydrology of, of this amazing river. So we'll continue to work to monitor this and there's lots of great organizations that are taking legal action and other action to try to stop um, further border wall construction and reinstate uh, the rule of law so that our environmental laws like the Clean Water Act and the National Environmental Policy Act and the Endangered Species Act can't be ignored for this construction to go forward. All right, so walking back up the river from the border, um, we've got another bird here. This bird was captured on one of the remote cameras along the San Pedro. This is a gray hawk. And this is a bird you commonly hear calling along the San Pedro River. The river supports the largest breeding population of greyhawks in the U.S., about 40% of the population. And there was just a great article, I think a couple months ago, in the Arizona Daily Star about some recent research trying to understand how these birds are doing along the San Pedro, and it looks like um, they are doing pretty well for now, which is great news. The yellow-billed cuckoo is another bird that is found along this stretch of the river. Um, it's also known to be the largest yellow-billed cuckoo population in the U.S. Um, with multiple breeding pairs documented. And um, there's proposed critical habitat along the river here for yellow-billed cuckoo, which is a threatened species. Here's a look at some of the mammals um, that we've seen along the San Pedro River with remote cameras. We've got some baby deer, always fun. It's a beautiful buck having a drink. And the river 
uh, hosts 80 species of mammal. It's top of the list for the diversity of vertebrate species in the continental US and second in the world for highest diversity of land mammals. So really amazing place. Back to the birds, this is a great blue heron that landed in front of the camera and walked on to do his business. There's lots of rookeries of, of great blue heron along the river. You can hear them. Uh, they nest in large groups and you can hear lots of crazy dinosaur-like noises if, if you come upon a rookery. Got some halalina during the day and at night <laughs> and saying hello. <laughs> All right, this is a very cool invertebrate. It's a fiery searcher beetle. We saw this right away. This was the first stop and take a picture um, critter that we saw on our walk on the lower San Pedro in the, or excuse me, the upper San Pedro in the riparian national conservation area. So these, these bugs hunt caterpillars and there's lots of different kinds of caterpillars out in the spring. Um, you see lots of the big tent caterpillars up in the canopy and those are important food for the um, yellow-billed cuckoos that we saw. We saw this beautiful gopher snake shortly into our walk. So there's 41 species of reptiles and amphibians that live along the San Pedro River. And we must have a plant in here. Um, this is the Huachuca water umble. This is an endangered species. It likes uh, flood scoured habitat in pockets of, of river habitat and other uh, aquatic areas. And um, there is designated critical habitat for the Huachuca water umble on the river. And all of these endangered species um, have been really important tools um, to, to, because they are listed as endangered, uh, you can require the agencies managing these lands to take into consideration effects of what they're doing on these critters. And this, this plant and some of these other endangered species have been pivotal in uh, reducing the amount of, of water being pumped out of the ground by Sierra Vista and Fort Huachuca uh, through lawsuits filed um, by the Center for Biological Diversity and others. Here's another look at the Huachuca water rumble. This is an image from the Pima County Sonoran Desert Conservation Plan because there is some Huachuca water rumble, I believe, in, in their, um, some of their properties. All right, now we have some fish. So um, there were 14 species of fish historically uh, living in the river. Um, I saw information that there's only two native fish remaining today, but I saw something else that said four. So the main ones uh, still in the river are the longfin dace and the desert sucker. I'm actually not sure if these are longfin dace, but we will look at these beautiful fish. Got some fish. Fish in the river. They're swimming around. All the little baby fish are over here. And the big ones are over there. This is the daycare, right here. Here come the big ones, here they come. <coughs> here they come. Look at them, there's so many. <laughs> my, my nephew, Hunter, my four-year-old nephew is a big fan of fish videos. I'm not sure why, I think they're not as, quite as exciting as some of the other critters, but these are some beautiful fish and um, this continues to be really important habitat for our remaining <laughs> native fish. And now we have a turtle. And again, some narration for a four-year-old. <laughs> Look, the turtle is swimming. It's swimming downstream. Look at him, look at his little flippers. Look at him go. Hey, buddy, he's coming around over here. They're so cool. 
These turtles are really cool. This is a Sonoran mud turtle. Here's a better look. Um, these uh, turtles are found um, in not too many places in the Sky Island region, so it's always a special sighting when you get to see one of these turtles. And I think I mentioned, yes, that there are 41 species of reptiles living along the river, so pretty cool. All right, I have a lovely video um, to sort of wrap things up with lots of different critters all rolled into one, courtesy of um, Russ McSpadden. So we'll take a look at this one. So the center's done a lot of work um, to protect the flow in the river along with the Nature Conservancy, I think Tucson Audubon and local Audubon groups and lots of other wonderful groups that are working to protect this river. I'll just leave you here with a little flowing water. I'm happy to take questions if there's any questions. And I really appreciate you joining us to check out the San Pedro River. I hope if you haven't made it out there yourself that you're able to, to find a way to get out there sometime. It's, it's a beautiful place in the Sky Islands. I'm just gonna escape out of full screen here. <laughs>